scores. And boys, if we had our full allotment of production here, I think we'd be firing the reckless speculation sounder because we're about to dive into our first twins sort of off season speculation discussion here. And I just want, before we get into the news and the move they made and some of the questions, I just want to put a disclaimer out from my end. I don't know where you guys stand. I'm still very much chapped one month later at the twins inability to win one damn playoff game. And so I am, I'm still very fiery when I think back to the debacle that happened at the end of September. But these questions are, how can we fix that? We're, we're trying to help here. See, this show, all this show does is it helps. It realistically helps teams, right? What so I'm to, saying, Judd, is I don't know if I want to fix it. You've got to get over I'm it. No, it. I'm saying that's our role. Like, we're on this earth. We do this show to help teams. It, now, if they choose not to take our advice, that's their fault. But we are here. What have we been trying to do? all season long help the vikings like we're literally uh, we're giving them a playbook every day and fans are like well no the, well of course you don't like that the meal's not done Mackie and judd cook the meal we do all the crappy work for you so that you can enjoy it and when the vikings meal is done it's going to be a super bowl crafted meal if listened to right the twins is the same way what i'm telling you right now fellas you've got to get past your anger because we're the only ones with the answers. Let me ask you this, okay? And maybe this is coming from a place of anger. 0-18, the longest postseason futility streak in North American sports history. And it's been about a month since we've said that. It can't be said enough. In fact, we should almost open every show until they win a playoff game we, by just reminding people, work welcome, through it. this is Mackie and Judd. And uh, today we're going to dive into Vikings free agency. But a quick reminder that the Twins are 0-18 in their last 18 playoff game. I, I need you to work through this. Do they deserve to be fixed? Yes. Yes, they do. Have they earned the right to be fixed? If they will listen. Yes, they do. You know why? Because we've got the answers. So you got to listen to it. Like we're, we're the Pied Pipers. We're, yeah, I, I'm more the 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 smoke piper we, at this point when it comes. We gotta to get you, we gotta get you past this this place of anger and resentment, and we have to get the twins to a place where because they're closer now. Yes, it's very frustrating, but they're closer now. They're not a dumpster fire of a franchise, which you know six years back they obviously were, or eight years back. So that's why this segment's important. Reckless speculation is code for listen up. And we've got the answers for your team. All right, that's what reckless speculation is. I'm uh, I'm glad that you're here with. I think I think I'm just. At why, a am point I where like, why am I the yeah, calm why, one? Why am I the calm one on the? Why are you the calm? That doesn't make any sense. No. Well, like, Declan, how do you, Declan? Are you to a point are, after one month of of digesting the Twins being 0 and 18 in their last 18 playoff games? Are you ready to say let's jump back in and just let's help this team see yes. the light, or are you more just like screw these guys? No, no, I, I I've gotten over it. It, it, it. I didn't watch a single playoff game to the World Series, so like it took a while. It took a while because, and, and I love baseball playoffs. So the fact it took that long to, to get in back to baseball was tough, but no, I want to help them. I, they, they need to go. They, there's an off season checklist. We still have to check off here. So, so we have to address things. We can fix this. It just takes one game, just one game. And then sports, we can get over this sports. Dad doesn't abandon his children. He leads the flock. Okay. <laughs> it's, a sports cult. Right. it's a sports cult. All right. Well, I'm 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 here and I just I'm present in this discussion and I will and I will contribute to this discussion. I just want you guys to know that I'm still chapped and I'm still pretty pissed All that right. they couldn't even win one damn game against the Astros. I'll mark so, that down right now. Phil, <laughs> Phil still chapped. <laughs> so uh, the news from yesterday, the twins have decided to not exercise Sergio Romo's 2021 five million dollar option. He's 37 years old. It's been super fun having him on this team. And for the most part, with the exception of a couple blow ups here and there, I think he's been great for the team. He's been a quality reliever. And I think he's been, for the most part, a good leader behind the scenes. And he's brought some personality and some sizzle to a team that was mostly just a piece of Salisbury steak for like 15 years. Um, now, did he did he cross the line a couple times and uh, and and maybe cause some ruffling of feathers when it didn't warrant it? Yes, but... This is the first decision the Twins have made in a long line of decisions they have to make this winter. So Romo gone, and that's $5 million that won't be on the books. The other big decisions, I think, in terms of the internal decisions they have to make, do they re-sign Nelson Cruz? Do they tender Eddie Rosario a contract going into his third year of arbitration? And what about the other free agents like Jake Odorizzi and Trevor May and Tyler Clippert? So my question to you is, the payroll is likely to come down. 
just based mm -hmm. on revenue losses in 2020. The White Sox are charging from behind in the American League Central. Yeah, we got to talk about them. Though. About to hire about, Tony Larusa. I, th I think they're about to do something <laughs> incredibly stupid. Yeah, I, I don't understand. Seventy-six-year-old manager. What is this, Connie Mack coming back from the dead? Yeah, yeah let's let's take a Tim Anderson-led, flair, awesome young yeah. White Sox team and put like the oldest hey, grizzled manager. If I'm the Twins or a Twins fan, I love this. I, I do love too, this, but I don't think I. I I think that team is going to be good enough and they're going to make moves in the off season like they always do. Um, and we can get to that. But my question to you is, did the twins miss their world series window these last two years? I can unequivocally say this. They did not miss their world series window. They missed an opportunity. So, so there was definitely a chance presented for success that, that the twins um, capitalized on during the course of the season. And then they got to the playoffs and they, um, well, they they peed down their pant leg. Uh, but that being said, the World Series window, I don't think, can be considered to be closed because there's still talent coming up. There's still a good core roster. I still, and I know the playoffs have been mismanaged, and I know it's frustrating, and I agree there, okay? But the fundamental core philosophy of this franchise now i think is a very sound and solid one that's incredibly competitive and puts you in a position to succeed now the question is when you get to october do you now say what have we done wrong and how do we change that but as far as the conversation of of boy those were two fun years and now i see you know fourth place in the american league central in 2021 no um i do think 2021 becomes inc incredibly important because I think that's a very good chance we don't have baseball in 2022. So you're going to continue to have attrition and guys um, coming off the roster. But no, I firmly do not believe that the window is completely closed because I think this franchise um, from, from the first day of spring trading to the last day of the regular season, very important to say, is run absolutely really well. And I think it's very, very competitive. Um, lessons have to be learned as far as playoff success. But I think if these guys are smart enough, are smart enough to, to learn from the two Astros games, and just as importantly, two nights ago, game six, right? Blake Snell, you don't take Blake Snell out. Tampa Bay did a very Twins-like thing. I think if you learn from those lessons, um, I would not say, oh, man, it's done. So... I don't th actually, you know what? Now that I think of it, we should actually rephrase the question from did they miss their World Series window to did they miss their window to win a playoff game? Let's let's start that. Like, like that's honestly that's the more credible question, right? Did they miss their window to of win? Of course a they yes. of course they did. Yes. yes, of course. Well, what do you mean? You just said they haven't missed their World Series window, but they've missed their playoff oh, a game. Playoff game, but one playoff game? One. Game one, Astros winnable. Game two, no, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, like, I'm the, the question. Series? I'm saying the question I posed was, have they missed their World Series window? Now is it shut? And what I'm saying is, no. The question really should be, have they missed their window to win a playoff game? Like, let's start with, like, can they win a playoff game next year? Oh, next year, of course, they yeah. Can. Um, so here's my take on it. All right, I think their best chance with this current collection was to do damage either in 2019 when they broke the home run record or 2020 when uh, they had all the stars aligned and two really good starting pitching performances in the first round. I think they blew their really good chances to potentially go deep and, and maybe even make some world series noise. Mm -hmm. um, were they going to be as good as the Dodgers? Pro probably not. I mean, the Dodgers rolled out just a ridiculous roster. Even if they would have made it through the American league this year, they probably still get beat by the Dodgers, but, but they missed their best chances. And now I think, I don't think they go into like a rebuild mode by any means. I think they're still going to be a playoff contender, especially if they expand the playoffs going forward. But I feel like a lot of their key pieces like Nelson Cruz He's probably gone at this point, especially if the National League opens up DH slots. That's like, you know, you're now you're opening up for 15 more teams to bid on his services. Mm -hmm. I think they probably transition away from an Eddie Rosario. I, I wouldn't be shocked if they traded Miguel Sano and they replace those guys with unproven rookie players like Alex Kirloff, we think is going to be amazing, but he might need an adjustment period. Brent Rooker, I think, is going to be really good, but he might slump in the first half or something. So. I, I see this team going through a little bit of a roster transition and also on the pitching side, they, 
their pitching staff is mostly made up of either trades or free agent acquisitions like Rich Hill made eight starts for them last year. And uh, Jacob Arizzi is going to be gone. Randy Dobnak made 10 starts. I don't know if I rely on him for a full season next year. So their starting rotation is in flux as they wait for some of their young stud prospect pitchers to come up. So I think I think their World Series window temporarily closes for 2021, barring a bunch of you know big time offseason moves I don't think they're going to make. I think they're competitive in 2021, but I think you're now sort of waiting for like the Royce Lewis, Alex Kirilov grouping of players and some of these pitchers like Jordan uh, Balazovic is their top pitching prospect. I think you need those guys to come in and make an impact for your next big window to open. And that might be another couple of years. Possibly. I will say this. I, th- I think the uh, potential subtraction of Sano, if done right, actually helps you out a lot. Um, he is, he's so hit and miss in every way possible. He is, he, we have an idea of a guy like that in our heads and what he can bring. And he consistently does not. So I don't know that the subtraction of a player like Miguel Sano doesn't actually improve your team short term. The one guy that the more I think about it, I would bring back is probably Cruz. He's older, but you know what? He's in incredible shape. Um, he, he sets a tone for that club on and off the field that's important my guess is he he um balances out if this makes sense Mm -hmm. donaldson to a certain degree donaldson unchecked sort of concerns me here if he's checked he doesn't as much uh but i think the one thing that we have to keep in mind is this market unless you are probably trevor bauer this market's going to be dead like there is going to be this is going to be a terrible market and so a lot of one, a lot of one year deals. I exactly right. And so if the twins want guys back, my guess is for, for the, the most part, not across the board, but my guess is for the most part that they can get guys back. This is going to be a winter in which my, I would just throw it out there. What about two or three guys get paid probably. And everybody else takes uh I'll take that at least for a year or two deal. Cause that this pandemic now is going to set the sport back financially by a lot so i do think if the twins truly want somebody back they probably can get them back for 2021 yeah uh you brought up miguel sano so i think if if, if we're making an off-season to-do list i am i listen you're not going to get a lot for him you're just not like you're he, he is what he is at this point he's he's 27 years old i believe let me just pull this up here he's 27 uh He's going to turn 28 halfway through next year before the All-Star break. And so no longer is he this young, promising, up-and-coming, moldable player. He is what he is. Like He is he is diet Adam Dunn. And if you look at his last three years as he's emerging into his prime, yeah. not only is he striking out more than any other hitter in baseball, his average season is – this is ridiculous. His average season is only uh, – Let's see here. 105 games, 71 games. He did play 53 of 60, but it's like two thirds or three quarters of, of every season because of injury. Um, and he's batting 222 with a 311 on base percentage. So I've already made my evaluation. He's not a good hitter. He runs into fastballs once in a while and curveballs and hits them over the fence. And that's great. And you can like you can find guys who do that. Uh, he's a he, I would say he's an average to below average defensive first baseman. And he can't stay healthy. And so I don't know what you're going to get for him. But if there's a team that can even take the contract off of your books. The contract's and I, fine. And I, and I get that there's no salary cap in baseball. And yep. so in theory, like, you, know, you, can just, you can just spend. Well, that's not the reality. The reality is the Twins are going to have to cut some payroll. And they're going to have to shuffle some things around. And so if somebody wants to take the 2021 and 2022, there's like $20 million left on this contract. And it allows the Twins to do something else at another position or it allows them to get a starting pitcher that you can slot into the rotation. Like that's one of the first things I would look at this off season is just addition by subtraction, Miguel Sano. And that, I, I think that he's still at the point where my guess is that you could find two or three teams out there that probably think that they can save him. Oh my God. He's, you know, if he just makes this adjustment in the box, he'll be fine. And, and, and he'll, he'll certainly, you know, um, thrive here. So if I, I, if, I'm the twins with Sano's current contract. I think he can definitely be dealt, but I just, I really believe that he's to the point now where 
if you move him off the roster, you might be doing yourself a favor. Um, just based on the fact that I don't know that he is ever going to be anything close to what we originally thought. In fact, I'm certain that he's not going to be. So that's one where I would say that's probably addition by subtraction. Mm-hmm. I think that's a fair thing to say. I would also really take a look at just my my overall approach. And this does, this applies to the playoffs too. I think uh, the, the Twins have this sort of low on base percentage, streaky power hitter run of guys in their lineup. And Miguel Sano is one of them. Eddie Rosario is one of them. Max Kepler has actually kind of turned into one of them, although I think he's at least shown a little bit more potential to be something more like he was in 2019. Yep. But that's just a really, really hard formula, especially when you get into like three and five game series where if you're not hitting for power and you're not getting guys on base, like how are you going to score runs? Yep. And, the, and the Twins last year, among the 10 guys that played the most for them, Mitch Garver, like listen to these on base percentages. So like anything, anything below three, three thirty and three twenty is like you're just not getting on base enough to make an impact mm-hmm. unless you're also hitting for power. Mm-hmm. Mitch Garver two forty seven on base percentage. Miguel Sano two seventy eight on base. I mean these are paltry, terrible, demotion worthy on base percentages. Mm-hmm. Jorge Polanco three oh four. Like he just wasn't getting on base. That's his job. Your job is to get on base, man. Eddie Rosario. 316, which is actually for him pretty good, but not very good relative to the rest of the league. Byron Buxton is a low on base percentage guy who it's for some power 267. So I'm not saying get rid of all of these guys, but I don't think you can have like six dudes in your lineup that are just feast or famine. They either, you know, they either make an out seven or eight times uh, or they hit a home run once in a while. Uh, You just need some more diversity and on base in your lineup. And I would look long and hard at that too. Do you guys think the Garver's fine? I can't decide there because I, he he was so good in 2019 and he was so bad, but it was a, a short year, but he was so awful. Do you think he bounces back and and, and is fine and that there is uh, some place that he can get between his success of 19 and 20? Or do you think that we've got a problem here and this guy just had one great year and he's going to be a wash from the I mean, year. De- Dex was, I think Dex was the first one on this show, he like was. 10 days into the season to say, Oh, oh, <laughs> and is, you told and him it to never got down. better. I did. I was wrong. Sorry, Declan. Yeah. I, I I'm, I'm a little worried about him. You know, I, I think the book came out of him a bit and look, I don't think he's as bad as he was in 2020. And, and that was pretty putrid performance, but I just, I just didn't think he could he hit what 29 home runs in like 97 games in 2019. Like that's seriously unheard of it, especially from a catcher position. I, I think he's a decent player, and in, in, in the minor leagues, he's hit everywhere he's been. So I think he's a solid hitter, and he's made a lot of good strides defensively. He's never going to be a staunch but like behind the plate. He's not going to be Alex Avila. He's not going to be a guy who's known for his defensive prowess, but he definitely has a good bat. But at this point, I, I wouldn't bail on him. I would probably just roll with the Jeffers-Garber tandem and accept the fact that, yeah, defensively, you might not be great. I think Ryan Jeffers did okay defensively, too, last year. He wasn't obviously a gold glove candidate, but he did okay. But I think you roll with both those guys. And that's a luxury to have if you have two offensive hitting catchers. Because, look, I mean, there's like, what, five, six catchers in the league that hit above average and can hit for power. And then the rest, it's pretty much the same from six through 25. Mm-hmm. So I, I think you, you you stick with Garber, you roll with Jeffers, and you just you do another tandem like that. I think that's probably what you would do. But, yeah, you don't bail on Garber just yet. So, you know what, I would, I would, probably, I would probably look at uh, at least – rolling the dice with them again in 2021. Cause I just don't think, I don't think you can, I mean, this is a great buy low option for other teams if they wanted to take a flyer on him. Um, but you'd be selling low on a guy that might explode again mm-hmm. for another team. Now he is going to be 30 years old in January. So I would, I would be a little bit careful age wise with him at catcher, but he also has experience. He can play corner outfield if needed. He can play first base. And so do you just have sort of a catcher rotation between him and Ryan Jeffers and then Mitch Garver, Maybe he plays like the corner outfield spots and some first base and DH, and he just becomes a guy that you look to get in the lineup situationally when he's not catching. I think I think position flexibility is a big thing for this team, and it seems like they might have lost a little bit of it last year. I mean, like Miguel Sano lost his position flexibility by just like not being able to play third base like anymore. Ability went w- was gone. Yeah, um, <laughs> completely. I mean, I just I think there's some room for for a couple guys and Mitch Garver can be one of them to to not just be locked in at one position and that might help clear some things up. The w- the one thing that concerns me about making judgments off this past season is 
it was so weird. Um, and I'm so so Gar- Garver basically from day one seems sort of like, well, I'd rather not play, but I have to play, and I know I have. That's really a bad way to, to look at at things. And so I do I do wonder now in retrospect that if guys had bad years, are, are they showing something about themselves as far as their ability on the field or it, or was that potentially a mental thing? And I don't know. And the, yeah. the, the one thing I will say, so the one, the one little inch that I will give Sano in this conversation, because it's an unknown, he had COVID. We know that. And we know he didn't have it bad, but we don't know if he had sort of some of the symptoms and was, you know, worn down or if he didn't have the uh, symptoms at all. My point being is I would be curious to know from my standpoint now how sick he got because he does not strike me as the type of guy that if he got sick, he doesn't strike me as the type of guy that necessarily would come back quickly. And that's not a a knock on him here. That's just, you know, if he lost uh, his strength, if he had a fever, I don't know. So the pandemic does cause me a little bit of of, to, uh, of a takeaway from, do we attribute some of it to the fact that it was a 60 game, really weird season? Or did a guy like Garver just, you know, thrive in 2019 and that was, was not him from day one. And that yeah. one, I can't tell. Yeah. Well, listen, so we, we got to get to a scoop with Doogie here, but we're going to keep Twins conversations going, much to much to my chagrin, because I'm just not over the playoff losses yet. And I'm like, I'm like diehard Twins guy on this show too. I don't know, man. This is the most mad I've been at them after a month. Probably, did the Blake Snell the 10 thing years I've been ma- here make you more upset? Did seeing Blake Snell come out, which was a very Twins yes, thing, it so did. you're like sort of back now? It it, it, it brought me mad. It, it brought me back to the look on Jose Barrios's face <laughs> as Rocco fan. Baldelli put both hands on his shoulders and looked him in the eye and said, "Son, you're not good enough to face this lineup for a third time, but Cody Stashak is uh, ready to come okay. and pick you up here. It's going to be great." Fair enough. So, uh, but some just to just to give a little teaser of some of the things we are going to talk about going into the next month, month and a half or so, is the Josh Donaldson contract still one that you're okay with? Don't answer that now. If the twins do move on from Miguel Sano, what is the risk that he turns into David Ortiz? That's another one we can dive into. Um, and anything else you guys want us to to touch on? Potential free agent candidates that do make sense for the twins if they can Trevor find Bauer. a way to make it work. Trevor Bauer would be great. I yeah, think that one's gonna honestly, if it came down to like you you could only fire one bullet, including your internal guys. Would you rather have Trevor Bauer for one year or Nelson Cruz for one year? Trevor Bauer is my Bauer. guy. Bauer. Bauer. Trevor Bauer for sure. All right. But um, we'll we'll have those conversations as we go forward here. 